Use the male age waist circumference summary data below to form a 98% confidence interval for the true slope beta 1 for the linear relationship between age and waist circumference in centimeters. And here's the data they give us below. Okay, so let's start out by um, recognizing what they're asking us to do. And it says that they want us to form a 98% confidence interval for the true slope beta 1. Okay, so when you're working with a confidence interval for the slope, one of the things you should write down in the first step is, of course, the n and the alpha. So let's say that n here, according to the problem, is 14, and that alpha is 98, or sorry, the confidence level is 98%, and alpha is therefore 2%. So alpha is 0 0.02. All right, now the data step is quite involved, so let's begin right away. The first thing we want to do is to look at the beta 1 hat point estimator for the beta 1 value. So we'll have sum of squares for xy over sum of squares for xx in order to calculate the beta 1 hat value. These values are provided in the problem, so we have 1,104.007143 divided by ssxx, which is 3811. 0.214286. Okay, so let me quickly calculate that for us. We'll have 1104.007143 divided by 3811.214286. Okay, so after doing the division, we get the answer 0 0.2. 289673 dot dot dot. So let's highlight this value because we're going to need that later. I'm going to actually store that value in my calculator under the letter B since we're using it for beta 1 hat. So B is an appropriate place to put it. Okay, now at that point, the next step of the process is going to involve calculating the sum of squares for error. That's SSYY minus beta 1 hat times SSXY, the mixed term. So SSYY is 942.0035714.5714. That'll be minus the beta 1 value from above. So I'm just going to write it as beta 1 hat, so we have room to put in the next value, which is the mixed term which is 1104.007 dot dot dot, right? Okay, let's take that value then and plug in our numbers into the calculator and come up with the SSE. All right, so we have 942.0035714 minus the slope, estimator B, or beta one hat, sorry, times 1104.007143. Okay, so that's the entire set of values plugged in, and we get the sum of square for error to be 622.202. So 622.202, and then it goes on 1432. All right, from there, once we have the sum of square error, we're going to calculate our S value, which is just the square root of SSE over N minus 2. So in our case, it's going to be the square root of 622.2021432, all divided by the degrees of freedom, which is 14 minus 2, or 12. And let's see what that ends up giving us in the calculator. So I still have that value up in my calculator, so I'm going to hit divide by 12. And then I'm going to take the square root of that. So to the half power is the same as taking the square root. And I'm going to have the answer 7.2007 dot dot dot. All right, now that's your S value. In order to come up with the ever important next step, which is the standard error for beta 1 hat, I have to take that S value and divide it by the square root of SSXX. All right, so S here is 7. 0.2007 dot 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 divided by the square root of the sum of square for the x's. And that value is, of course, 3,811. So 3,811 point two one four two eight six. Okay, let's see what that gives us. So I still have that s value in my calculator, so I'm just going to hit divide by the square root of 
3811.214286. Close up my parentheses, hit enter, and I end up with the answer 0 0.116638 dot dot dot. Now that's an important value for us, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight it here, and I'm going to store it in my calculator under S, alpha S. So I have that for later use. All right, now the next step is gonna to be to get our table values. Let me grab another sheet of paper and we'll work that out. Okay, so next step is to get our table value, T alpha divided by two. Now T alpha divided by two, in this case, since alpha is 0 0.02, alpha divided by two will be 0 0.01. And then the degrees of freedom for the problem, since N is 14, will be N minus two or 12. All right, so now we're gonna go look that up and determine what our table value is. Okay, so let's go to the T table, look in the 0.01 column down to degrees of freedom 12 and see what value we find. Okay, so we're looking for 0.01 in one tail with 12 degrees of freedom. We find the answer 2.681. Okay, so we found the answer 2.681, 2.681 for our critical table value. Now we're going to take that value and plug it into our margin of error formula. This formula is quite simple for this um, confidence interval. The formula is T alpha divided by 2 times the standard error for beta 1 hat. Now the standard error for beta 1 hat is what we spent all that time calculating before. So our answer is going to be 2.681 times 0 0.116638 dot dot dot. All right, let's see what that turns out to be. Now, I've stored that number in my calculator already, so I'm just going to do 2.681 times alpha s. And when I'm done, I get the answer 0.3127, so on and so forth. I'm going to store that in my calculator under x, and remember that's my margin of error there. So we have the answer then 0 0.31270 dot dot dot. Okay, so that's my margin of error. Our next step is to plug that into my confidence interval for beta 1 hat. For beta 1, pardon me. But we're going to use beta 1 hat as our point estimator. And then we'll do beta 1 hat plus error on the other side. So beta 1 hat minus error, beta 1 hat plus the error. Let's see what that turns out to be for us. The beta 1 hat value is 0 0.2896 dot 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 minus the error, and then the same number, 0 0.2896 plus the error. All right, when we work that out, we'll have the following results. Okay, so it's gonna be 0.289673, so on and so forth, minus the error, and then that same value plus the error. All right, we get this interval which includes negative values, negative 0 0.023 up until 0 0.602. Okay, so there's our interval. If you want to write it in a different format, we can put beta 1 in the center, that's the population parameter for the slope, and we get 0 0.602 and negative 0 0.023. All right, what this shows is that the interval goes from negative to positive. And remember, that means that zero is inside the interval. And if zero is inside the interval, it's quite possible that the, um, the population parameter beta 1, or in other words, the population slope, is equal to zero. It's one of the possible candidates. So if it is equal to zero, that would imply that there's no linear relationship between the two variables x and y. So based on the fact that this interval includes zero, since it goes from negative to positive, what we can say here is that uh, we're 98% confident that the beta 1 value is somewhere between negative 0 0.023 and 0 0.602. And since zero is included in that interval, um, we cannot conclude that there is a linear relationship between x and y. So that's that we cannot uh, conclude that there's a linear relationship.